One of the most common mistakes I see in renders, which takes minimal effort to improve, is the camera work. I'm going to go over multiple things that will hopefully improve your camera work in one way or another. This advice is primarily geared towards animation, but many of these tips can also significantly enhance still renders. I know people use the noise modifier to fake a handheld camera, but one, it takes forever to set up, and two, it rarely ever looks like the real thing. There's two good ways to do this. Ian Hubert has a completely free add-on called Camera Shakeify. I've been using it for like over a year and a half now. So here I have this project file that I worked on for a t-shirt, and uh, let me just go into solid shading so I can play it back in real time. Uh, you can see the camera movement is just the camera animated on the z-axis just going up and it looks fine But I feel like we could add some personality to this So all you have to do is to just select the camera you're using go into your camera properties scroll down And if you've installed the plugin, you'll see this menu here. So let's just click plus and You can already see that it's doing something, but this is too crazy So I'm gonna pick a different preset that I like I really like the close-up and I'm going to lower the influence Which is basically the strength of the entire effect and now if we play this from the start There's some very subtle movements that really add character the scale slider controls the amplitude of the shake range So if I set this to 10 it would have a 10 times bigger motion range than what it did before you can tick this box for manual timing and animate this value if you want your camera to, let's say, start off shaky, then not shaky, then shaky again for fine tuning some details. You could also use this to fake uh, an explosion camera shake. For example, here, uh, something blows up next room, add some sound effects, that's pretty convincing. Speed should be pretty self-explanatory. Here's what it's like on one, here's what it's like on 10. And for the frame offset, I actually like to input a completely random number because once you put this preset in and leave it on zero, you're gonna get the exact same camera shake movement on every single project file that you use. That way I get unique shakes every time I use it. And right here, if you duplicate your camera and it starts acting weird, just press this and it will fix it for you. The other way you can take this to a whole new level is using your phone as a virtual camera. If you have an iPhone, VirtuCam is definitely worth the $5. You connect your phone to their Blender add-on and you can just move around with your phone and do some detailed close-ups or use your camera as if you were in your project file in real life. Here's how I use VirtuCam. Uh, it was this box that I animated sort of uh, levitating up in the air and I needed precise camera movement as if someone was sort of recording it. So I just recorded it with my phone and it input all the camera data, already smoothened and yeah, it looks great to me. There's also a free alternative called CamTrack AR, but it doesn't have a real-time view on your phone. For Android, look up Blendar Track, which does the same thing, just again, not real-time. I'm not gonna show you how to set these up step-by-step, step, but these tutorials do a pretty good job. You can actually use composition guides to frame your shot easier. All you have to do is to just select your camera, go into Viewport Display, Composition Guides, and here you have your Rule of Thirds, your center, if you want to center something, your diagonal, your golden ratio, and even the harmony ratio, which I've never even heard of. So here, if I enable my rule of thirds, I'm keeping my sky on the first row, and then my sort of sand horizon is on this line here. If you don't quite have the feel for framing your shots yet, or you just really want to make sure something is centered, this technique can help you. For those unfamiliar with the rule of thirds, there's plenty of online resources since it's commonly used in photography and filmmaking. Right above that is the pass plateau setting, which I hope most of you know, but this just lets you change the opacity uh, of the darkened overlay outside of your lens. So a lot of the times I'll just set this to like 0.95 or one, just to not get distracted by everything outside of my view. I love fisheye lens footage. It's a pretty cool way to get a stylized look like a Wong Kar Wai film or a skate video shot on a VX1000. So just select your camera, ignore the messy project file, make sure you're on cycles and on rendered view, and set your camera type to panoramic. So your camera probably got pushed really far away from your subject, no worries. Uh, you just want to select your camera and then I'm just going to move it closer to my subject and the effect becomes more prevalent. These two values are your friends, your lens and your field of view. I recommend values from 15 to 35 
uh, 15 being more distorted and 35 looking more subtle. If we just go out, you can see that the fisheye is still there, just not, you know, as much. But a 15 is pretty stylized. And you see these black borders around the edges. All you have to do is to just drag the second value up uh, higher until they are gone. And there you go, you have a cool fisheye effect. One of the most common mistakes I see in beginner camera animation is they just put two keyframes down and that's it, they call it a day. If we take a look at this camera motion, we can see that it's starting off slow, then fast, then slow again. You can tell by the graph curve here. You can access this under here. And we just wanna make these linear. I don't really see a reason why you would want to use the default blender easing for any camera animation ever. So just go into the graph editor, select my camera, I'm gonna select these. I'm gonna hold control and deselect these two. Press G, X, and drag them so these become linear. And I'm gonna do the same for these. Here we go, we're linear now. Added some camera Shakeify, and now it looks much more professional. Rolling shutter is a very subtle trick that simulates an imperfection of older digital cameras where if the camera is moving or panning fast, you get this sort of diagonal distortion. So here in Ashthorpe's Evanetta from 2020, we can see we're going across a bridge on a handheld camera from a car going fast. And you can see that sort of the bridge is sort of slightly warping to the left as well as the light pose very slightly. And it's sort of giving this nice little sense of um, speed subconsciously, I think. I'm not gonna have the coolest scene in the world to demonstrate this since I don't really have anything like that to show this off. So I just have this demo scene here where the camera is just panning from left to right. So all you do is go into your render properties, check motion blur, and enable rolling shutter by just selecting top bottom here. So this top value here is your general motion blur, and this bottom value here, basically the lower it is, the more you're gonna see the rolling shutter effect. They are intertwined, so you just have to find a good combination between these values for whatever you're working on, but I'm gonna show you some examples of uh, value combinations. So here I've rendered out some comparisons um, using an HDRI, so the uh, buildings in the back are not going to warp, but if this was actual geometry, they would. So the first one, this is without any rolling shutter or motion blur. This one is with 0.5 motion blur and 0.10 shutter. You can see the bending happening here. On render three, I increased my motion blur to 0.6 and increased this to 0.25. Here, it just got more blurry. On four, I increased my motion blur even more, but lowered my rolling shutter, so it got more bendy. And on the fifth one, I kept the motion blur the same, but I lowered my rolling shutter value again. And you can see that it sort of counteracts they sort of counteract each other. So here's another pretty cool tip. If you press shift and tilde key while you're in your camera view, you will enable this sort of fly through mode where you can control your camera with the WASD keys. And you can just use this to position the camera wherever you want it. All you have to do is to just figure out what angle you want and then just press enter and the camera will stay there. So there's actually a pretty creative application for this tool too. You can enable auto keying while flying through and the animation's playing and you'll get your own sort of fly through footage that you control with your WASD keys. Only thing is you might need to offset your animation frames if you're doing an animation. So the way I do this is I just press A, then select all my keyframes in here with A and then just G, X and move them about 50 frames or so and then set my last frame to this. So after that, let's enable the auto keying, press play, shift tilde, get ready. If you hold alt, the camera is gonna go slower. If you hold control, it's gonna go faster. This is a very terrible camera movement, but I'm doing my best. Then just press enter and you'll have a pretty bad camera animation. You can make it look better if you go into the graph editor, select all and press alt O a bunch of times. And this is just going to smooth everything out and make it look more organic. And now if we play that back, It's gonna look slightly better up until, you know, I lost track of the camera, but that was my first attempt. If you do this multiple times, you're definitely gonna get a better result. And if your mouse sensitivity is uh, too high that you can't control it, all you have to do is to just go into preferences, navigation, and under this walk menu here, you can set your sensitivity here. Instead of going to your scene properties and changing the camera here, you can just go into the outliner and click the green camera icon next to the camera that you wanna use. 
So yeah, that's pretty much it. I didn't go into too much detail about camera movements in particular because there's already an abundance of resources on that on YouTube. But if it's something that you guys would want me to look at, let me know in the comments. I hope you can take some of these tips with you. Let me know if there's any tricks I missed. And yeah, hit the like button, hit subscribe. That's it. Peace out.